very good morning to you and welcome to St. Lawrence Jury for our weekly Holy Communion service. We pray together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for all thy faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve thee in holiness and truth to the glory of thy name. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our first reading today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 to 10. St. Paul writes, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know, but God knows. And I know that this man, whether in body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surprise, surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Here ends the first reading. The Gospel is that according to St Matthew, chapter 6, starting to read at the first verse. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things? they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given to him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son? and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honour except in his own town, among his relatives and his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few people who were ill and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Here ends the Gospel. 
Praise be to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. It's good to be together this morning. When I say together, uh, unusually, in recent weeks, I'm in the chapel by myself this morning, which is why I'm able to focus much more on the broadcast part of the service. I wanted to talk about this passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. It's a fairly convoluted passage, quite difficult to get your head round. It talks about people being taken up into, uh, uh, into the third heaven and uh, not everyone is very clear as to exactly what that means. And then it talks about St. Paul having a thorn in the flesh. And again, nobody's quite clear what that means. Although many scholars have come to the conclusion that it's possible that Paul was blind or nearly blind, and that that was what he described as his thorn in the flesh, something to keep him humble and relying on God. And as he has described this uh, situation that he has been through and the work that he's been doing, he's very well aware that it would be quite possible for him to boast of the work that God has given him. And so in response to his thorn in the flesh, he says that God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. I remember when I was a teenager, we used to sing a song by, uh, based on that phrase, my grace is enough for you, my strength is enough for you. And it is an amazing reminder to us, particularly as we go through difficult times in our lives, that when we feel at our weakest, it is a time that enables us to acknowledge that anything that we do or say that is acknowledged as something of our ministry as Christians is due not to our own strength, but in our weakness, it is due to God's power. Let us not be afraid of admitting those times when we feel weak and uncertain, for in those times we can throw ourselves on God's mercy and grace, and as we do so, we will discover that his power can work through and within us. He concludes, St. Paul concludes this passage by saying, when I am weak, then I am strong. Not because he is himself strong, but because his weakness enables the power of God to be more, more visibly seen by those around. Let us pray that in our own weaknesses, God's power and grace will be seen in us and through us, that his name may be praised. Amen. And so we say together the creed, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
And so let us pray. Let us pray to God by whose authority we are called to his service. Father God, keep your church steadfast, confident in the strength that comes only from your grace. Bless those who are chosen as your ministers and messengers, that they may preach the gospel with assurance and sustain those whose burdens are heavy as they work to relieve the burdens of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wherever your word is preached, grant that it shall be heard with understanding and received with faith. Change the hearts of those who glory in their own strength and authority and teach them to bear their power humbly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us wisdom to discern the gifts that you have given to our friends and colleagues. Teach us to learn from one another and to give support where it is needed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold those who wish to help others but are frustrated by opposition or indifference. Give grace to all who suffer that they may be open to accept relief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, through our prayers, in the name of Christ, may we overcome evil and offer ourselves in our weakness to be servants of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent to you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, saying with me, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, <clears throat> and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, <clears throat> by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this, as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Grant, O Lord, we beseech thee, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by thy governance, that thy church may joyfully serve thee in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>